fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. The Lone Ranger and Toto guided their horses through a woods near the top of Eagle Mountain. Lower on that mountain and on the other slopes in the vicinity, extensive mining operations were in progress because the area was rich in gold. But the masked man and his Indian friend were not interested in gold mines. They were thinking of Dan Reed, the Lone Ranger's teenage nephew, whom they were to meet in the nearby community of Eagle City. They drew rain in a clearing. Oh, 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 Here's a spring to provide us with water, Tonto. We'll camp here. Ah, this good place. Oh, uh, just leave your blanket roll and saddlebags. I'll unpack our gear while you go on to Eagle City. You like not go to meet Dan Reed? No, Toto. I don't want to ride into town wearing my mask, and there's no point in taking the time to put on a disguise. You meet Dan and bring him here. Uh, here, saddlebag. I'll take them. Me untie blanket roll. All right, I'll give you a hand. Uh, uh, Dan go to town on stagecoach? No, there's no stagecoach to Eagle City. Dan's riding his horse. Oh. Otherwise, he'd have had to ride on one of the Hendricks freighters. Uh, easy, Scott, easy. Help me ready now. I'll have the camp established by the time you return. Uh, get him up to town. Dan Reed, the nephew of the Lone Ranger, rode into Eagle City and dismounted in front of the oh, local oh. office of the Hendricks freight line. Steady, boys. As he tied his horse to the hitch rail, he looked for his friends. But the only person in sight was a lean old man with a wrinkled face and a drooping mustache. He grinned as he approached. Howdy, son. Welcome to Eagle City. Thanks, mister. I'm Hank Peabody, swamper in the cafe, as call me Hank. Glad to know you, Hank. I'm Dan Reed. Uh, shake, shake. Fine horse you're riding. Thanks. His name's Victor. Victor is a good name. You planning to prospect in the hills for gold? No. Some of the richest claims in the country are in the hills around here. Trouble is, most of the land has been staked out. Oh, I, I hadn't thought of searching for gold. If you have some cash, you might buy a good claim. I haven't enough cash to buy a gold claim, even if I wanted to. You could probably sell that horse for enough to make a deal with Jake Ronson. He'd sell mighty cheap right now. I know that for a fact. Heard him talking about it in the cafe just a few minutes ago. <laughs> oh, gosh, he's mad. Oh, is he? <laughs> sure is. Got a bill for freighting his gold, and it was more than the gold was worth. The doggone fool should have known better than to pay freight on ore. Should have had it refined, then freighted the bullion. I think I'll go into the freight office and see if my friends have left any word for me. Freight office is right there. Sam Slater is the Eagle City manager of the Hendricks line. Look through the front window. You'll see him at his desk. Uh -huh. Now, as I was saying, Dan, if you're a mind to buy yourself a gold... Oh, not today. <laughs> I'm going to talk to Mr. Slater. Yeah, well, drop into the cafe, Dan. The Double Eagle. Best meals in town. All right, Hank. Thanks. As Dan Reed entered the office of the Hendricks freight line, a mild-mannered man looked up from the desk. He was the Eagle City manager named Sam Slater. Mr. Slater? Yeah, that's right. My name's Dan Reed. Have you a message for me? Message for you? No, I haven't. Is there supposed to be a message here for you? Well, I... Well, I expected to meet friends here in Eagle City, but I haven't seen them. I, I thought they might have left a note for me. Not that I know of. Oh, I guess I'll be along pretty soon. Well, you're welcome to sit down and wait, son. It's 
cooler in here than outside in the sun. Oh, thanks, Mr. Slater. Uh, I think it looks I... like there might be trouble. Jake Ronson's heading this way with a couple of friends. Oh? He's talking to Hank. Yes, I saw Hank introduce himself to you. Did he tell you about Jake Ronson? Oh, he didn't say much. Jake owns a small gold claim. He's mad because of what it cost to ship his ore. You, Slater. Ah, oh, Jake, take it easy. You let me alone, Joe. Slater, you think because of Hendricks Land is the only freight and outfit you can rob people like me, eh? Jake, I don't set Jake. the prices. They're the same on all the Hendricks lines. They're too high. That ore shipment of mine. I told you not to ship the ore. You should have had it refined in the stamping mill and freighted the refined gold. Same as everyone else. Don't tell me how to run my business. All right, Jake. And don't get the idea that the other mine owners and I can't do without the Hendricks line. We're through with your outfit. Well, that's up to you, Jake. To me and the others, huh, boys? Oh, oh, Jake. Jake. I'm serving notice, Slater. I'm going to start a freight line with honest prices. And I'll take away your business. I'm going to bust you in the Hendricks outfit. Are you, Jake? Yeah, yeah. I've already talked to some of the men, and they promised me their business. You'll learn a costly lesson, Jake. So you threaten me, eh? Oh, no, 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 Jake. I only You said... figure to teach me a lesson, eh? I expect you'll send gunmen to attack my wagons, eh? Nonsense. You just try it, Slater. I'll be ready for your gunslingers. I'll have my wagons guarded. There'll be no gunplay as far as I'm concerned. You don't fool me with mealy mouth talk. I'll be ready for your attacks, you thieving crook. Jake, that's about enough. You're free to complain all you want about the Hendricks rates. But don't you call me a crook. Another threat, huh? You hear that, boys? Now get out. I'm gone. But I'll break you, you crook. Get out. Come on, boys. Tonto arrived in town a few minutes after Jake Ronson and his friends had left the office. Dan Reed met his Indian friend and rode with him to the camp on Eagle Mountain. There he told the Lone Ranger about the incident he had witnessed. The masked man was keenly interested. And then about ten minutes after Jake Ronson left with his friends, Tano rode into town and we left right away. Dan, how did Slater take it when Ronson called him a crook? Golly, he was awfully mad. He said Ronson was mighty unfair. Ronson, plenty big fool. Pay freight on ore. That's what Mr. Slater said. All the other mine operators get the ore refined, and then they pay freight on just the gold ingots. But Ronson insisted on shipping the ore just as it came from the ground. It was all packed in burlap sacks. Why him do thing like that? Well, that's what I'm wondering. Mr. Slater said he tried to tell Ronson the freight bill would be more than the ore was worth, but Ronson told him to mind his own business. Kimasabi, yes. Yeah. You think Hendrick's line crooked? As far as I know, Tonto, the company's very fair. Mr. Slater said Ronson would go broke if he tried to carry freight rates at, at reduced rates. I'd like to know what Ronson has in mind. Uh, Kimasabi, me scout around town for a few days. Maybe find out. That's a good idea, Tonto. Dan Reed and Tonto went into town the following day and returned to the camp after dark with a report. Jake Ronson wasn't fooling. He really intends to start a freight line. Today he bought a heavy wagon. That's right. And him talked to miners. Him promised to cut freight rate. He can't do it without losing money. What's behind his plan? The following night, when Dan and Tonto returned from Eagle City, they brought further news of Jake Ronson's activities. Today he bought six horses, sir. And plenty good horses. And him hired driver and good shotgun guard. Then he has one wagon ready to go. That's right. He says he'll operate one wagon to prove that he can handle freight at half of what the Hendricks lines charge. Then he'll be able to borrow money for expansion. You know when he plans to make the first run? Oh, no, sir. Yeah. What else did Ronson say? Oh, that's about all. Well, him say plenty about Sam Slater. Oh, yes. Golly, I should think Mr. Slater would be fighting mad. Uh, what did Ronson say about him? Well, he keeps calling Mr. Slater a thief and a crook. Tells everyone they're being robbed when they use the Hendricks lines. Sheriff warned Ronson two or three times. But Ronson only laugh and say him not afraid of Slater. Well, I guess there's not much Slater can do about it. Ronson's bigger and stronger. Has Slater made any comment? Not that I know of, oh, Him plenty quiet. Sometimes quiet men are dangerous. The next day, Jake Ronson spread word that he would make a special announcement that evening in the cafe. 
So instead of returning to camp as usual at sundown, Dan Reed and Tonto remained in town to hear the announcement. Soon after dark, the cafe was crowded with mine operators and others who wanted to hear what Jake had to say. Sam Slater was not among those present, but the sheriff was there, and so were Dan and Tonto. Presently, Dan nudged his Indian friend. Tonto, Bronson's climbing up on a chair. Ah, maybe now he'll make announcements. Dance! Dance! Quiet, gentlemen. Quiet. Let's hear what Ronson has to say. Quiet, gents. You waiters, pull up the service. Uh, gents, I uh, reckon you've all heard about my new freight line. I want you to know that I'm going ahead with my plans despite the threats. Threats? Threats, Jack? What are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, yes, gents. I've had a couple of letters that threaten trouble for me. Me and my wagons, if I tried to compete with the Hendrix outfit. Now, who had you say you didn't tell me you'd had threats? I didn't mention the letters, Sheriff, because they were unsigned. I couldn't prove that Sam Slater wrote well, this. Oh, Golly, Tonto, that doesn't sound like Sam Slater. Where are the letters? I burned them. That shows how little I think of Slater's threats. Boys, I say this is a free country. No one has the right to stand in the path of progress. Or to stifle competition. Oh, that's right, yeah. right, right. Of course, if you mine operators are afraid to use my freight and service, I'll go broke. And the Hendrix line will have things its own way and be free to keep on robbing. Yeah. My, uh, my wagon starts for St. Joe one week from today. My rate for carrying gold bullion is just half. What the Hendrix people charge. Well, you'll have my business, Jake. Yeah, and mine. Oh, Count on me, Jake. I'm all for you. We'll bust him. Hey, all all right, boys. Thanks. I knew I could count on you. I'll have my office open to receive your shipments later in the week. Right now, I'm going home to do some paperwork. But I, uh, I want to show my appreciation to you. The refreshments are on me. As Jake Ronson left the cafe, Dan Reed turned to Tonto and said, Do you think we should start for camp right away, Tonto? You want to start now, Dan? Well, I'm mighty hungry. <laughs> Half hour make no difference. Lone Ranger not mind if we stay and eat. Good. Jake Ronson will pay for the meal. He said the No, Dan. No. We pay for supper. Well, okay. As long as we eat, I'm starved. Because of the decision to eat before starting the trip to the Lone Ranger's camp, Dan and Tonto were in the cafe a half hour later when a man rushed through the batwing doors and shouted excitedly. Hey, Sheriff. Oh, I'm glad you're still here. I ran all the way. Well, what's the trouble, Sandy? I was passing Doc Smith's house on my way home. Doc was standing in the open door. He asked me to hurry back here and tell you. Well, tell me what. Is Doc in trouble? No, 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 not Doc. It's Jake Ronson. What about Jake Ronson? He's in Doc's house. Someone shot him. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue. The sheriff left the cafe and hurried to the doctor's house a quarter mile away. He was followed by Dan and Tonto and half a dozen men whose curiosity outweighed the desire for further refreshments. The group crowded Doc Smith's living room, where Jake Ronson sat with one leg braced by splints and heavily bandaged. The doctor said, There's not much I can tell you, Sheriff. I heard a shot and went out the front door to investigate. I saw Jake Ronson lying in the street. Did you see who fired the shot? No. Looks like the bullet hit Jake in the leg. Yes, the tibia was broken. The why? The bone between the knee and the ankle. I carried Jake in here for treatment. I sent for you because I thought you should know about it. It may have been an attempted murder. Sam Slater's work, I'll bet you. Jake, what have you got to say? Nothing. Jake, I've got to arrest the man who shot you. Forget it, Sheriff. I'll handle things my own way when I get back on my feet. Do you know who shot you? I wouldn't name anyone unless I had proof. Did you see him? Sheriff, I'm not going to say anything about the shooting. But I'll tell you this. It's not going to scare me out of starting my freight line. My wagon will start on schedule. Good for you, Jake. That's the talk. We'll stick with you. But, Jake, Sheriff, I'll tell you this much. 
If anything happens to my freight wagon or the gold cargo, it's because of Sam Slater. Remember that. We won't forget it. I'll remember it, Jake. Slater, the one who shot you? I'm not talking about that. All right, Jake, I can't make you talk. But I'm going to call on Slater, see what he has to say. Later that night, Dan Reed and Tonto told the Lone Ranger all that had happened in town. Seated on the ground close to the campfire, the masked man listened with interest. So when the sheriff went to talk to Sam Slater, several of the townsmen dragged along and Tonto and I went with him. Slater was alone in his house. How did he react when he heard that Ronson had been shot? Well, he seemed surprised. He said he knew nothing about the shooting. Tano and I stayed and talked to him a few minutes after the others left. He was mighty worried. Why? Well, he figures he'll be blamed if anything happens to Ronson's first wagon. Well, he more for damn job. He did? Yes, uh. sir. He said he needs someone to help him with the bookkeeping. And besides, he'd like to have someone who could swear to an alibi in case he needs it. Then that might be a good idea. You mean, you want me to take the job? Yes. But Slater will want me to live at his house. That's all right. It'll be for only a week or so. Tonto will see you every day to receive a report. We'll know a lot more about Slater by the time the Ronson line starts operations next week. Dan Reed rode into town the next morning and went to work for Slater. During the following week, Jake Ronson conducted business from his home, where he was confined with his leg in a heavy cast. On the appointed day, the freighter was supposed to start at noon, but Ronson found last-minute details that needed attention. It was late afternoon when everything was ready. With the aid of crutches and friends, Ronson made his way to the center of town, where his freighter was ready to start. Tonto and Dan were in the crowd that gathered. Did you get a copy of the route, Tonto? Uh, we get it. Are you and the Lone Ranger going to follow the wagon to make sure nothing happens? That's right. After wagons start, me ride to camp, tell Lone Ranger... Then we follow. I wish I could go with you. Oh, Kimasami, say you stay in John. Yes, I know. Are you going to follow the gold all the way to St. Joe? I may not know. Well, driver, you have the best guard in the county. You should get through all right. Oh, we'll make it, Mr. Ronson. You and the guard keep your eyes open. We sure will. All right, let her go. Come on, get up there. Let's go. Let's go. There it goes, Tonto. Uh huh. Now, me go tell Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger was waiting when Tonto rode into camp with the news that the wagon, after a long delay, had finally started on the trip. We'll start as soon as I tighten the cinch. Is Dan going to stay in town? Ah, uh, him stay in town. Easy, steady, Silver. Uh, we catch wagon, ride alongside? No, Tonto. If the garden drivers see us, they might think we're outlaws and start shooting. We we'll ride far behind the wagon. All right, you ready? Uh, Easy, steady, ready, Silver. Uh, on, Silver, come up, scout. The wagon trail followed a winding route through the rugged mountains to avoid steep slopes. Because of this, the freighter had to travel over five times the beeline distance between Eagle City and a landmark known as Blue Spring. The wagon was halfway to Blue Spring when darkness gathered. Yep. Get up there! Come on! You going to keep driving all night? It depends on the moonlight, shotgun. I'll keep going as long as I can see the trail. Want to make up the time we lost at the start. Get up there! Come on! Get on! At midnight, the moon was high and bright, and Blue Spring was just ahead. There, a man waited in ambush. Though the ambusher had left town after dark, he had reached Blue Spring ahead of the freighter by riding over the mountains in a relatively straight line instead of following the meandering wagon trail. He waited behind a rock. When he heard the approaching wagon, he gripped his carbine and levered a cartridge into position. I'll get the guard first, then the driver. <laughs> the Lone Ranger and Toto were on the wagon trail when they heard the gunfire some distance ahead. Guns mean trouble. Let's go, Toto. Monsieur! Get up, scout! The masked man and the Indian raced ahead on the rough road, guiding their horses around dangerous turns at breakneck speed. Jake Ronson had already started to remove the gold from the wagon. He was holding a heavy ingot of bullion when he heard the approaching hoofbeats. As he glanced at the back trail, he saw two horsemen ride into view. 
His carbine had been left beside the trail, so he dropped the gold and drew his six gun. In a frenzy of fear, he opened fire without realizing that the range was too great for accurate shooting. Bronson was gripped by panic when his gun was empty. Thinking only of escape, he leaped to the roadside, raced through the underbrush, and mounted his waiting horse. Despite the gunfire, the Lone Ranger and Toto did not slacken their speed. They saw the gunman holster his empty weapon and ride away. A moment later, the masked man and his friend drew rein beside the halted wagon. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, two men on wagon. Do what you can for them, Toto. I'm going after that gunman. As the Lone Ranger turned off the trail and started an uphill pursuit, Toto climbed aboard the freighter. He found that the guard and driver, though wounded, were alive. Both were unconscious. The driver opened his eyes while the Indian was dressing his wound. Oh, you'll be all right. Wound not kill. Dry gulcher. Shot without warning. You and guard both live. Me turn wagon, tie scout behind, then drive to town. Take you to doctor. The gold. Gold safe. You not worry. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger pursued the fugitive to the top of the mountain and down the other side. On the comparatively level floor of the valley, he called on Silver for greater speed. Come on, Silver. Faster, big fella. Silver seemed to know that he was expected to overtake the horse ahead. With every stride, the powerful stallion gained on the man ahead. Come on, Silver. Silver closed the gap. The Lone Ranger was riding alongside the gunman. He held his rope. Uh, let me alone. Go away. Rain in or I'll rope you. You'll never get me alive. I want you. A rope snaked through the air. The noose dropped over the fugitive. Hold over. Hold back. Oh, yes. He was pulled from the saddle. Oh. He hit the ground and rolled, then wailed in pain. Oh, my leg. My leg. Easy, silly big fella. You should have stopped your horse. Oh, this time my leg is really broke. Oh, help me, help me, will you? I, I can't stand the pain. Jake Ronson. So you're the gunman. At about 8.30 in the morning, Dan Reed and Sam Slater were on their way from Slater's house to the Hendricks' office when a crowd of men approached. You, Slater, we want you. Dan, those men look ugly. They're bringing ropes. We'll fix you. Try to steal our gold. Uh... Now, hold on, gents. What's wrong? A plenty. Ronson's freighter was stuck up. The garden driver was shot. Mr. Yes, Slater didn't do it. He hired it, done. No, no, gents. I swear An I didn't. An engine brought the wagon into town a few minutes ago. Doc is working on the garden driver right now. Jake Ronson said you'd do something like that. No, I swear. This is the first I knew of it. Grab him, boy. Oh, oh. And the kid, too. Take them both. Yep. Hold on there, you crazy go hey, Sheriff, stop these men. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Sheriff, we just saw the Ronson freighter. The engine told us about the ambush. You let Dan and Slater go. They didn't do it. But, Sheriff, we... Look over yonder, boy. My deputies are carrying a man into my office. You see who he is? Why? It's Jake Ronson. Yes, and this time his leg is really busted. What, really busted? Look, the man who caught him all night to bring him through the hills. From the place where he ambushed his own freighter. That's right, boys. Ronson schemed to get a lot of gold on a freighter. He planned to dry gulch the garden driver and take the gold for himself. And he planned that Slater here'd be blamed for it. But Ronson had a broken leg. That was a fake. I got the whole story from Doc Smith while he was working on the garden driver of the freighter. Ronson persuaded Doc to help him fake the story of a broken leg. Ronson? So we'd all think Slater had taken a shot at Ronson. That's right. Doc didn't know that Ronson planned to use a breaking broken leg as an alibi while he went out and tried to murder his own garden driver. Why did he murder him? Well, Doc wouldn't have any part in an attempted murder. So he told the whole story. And then Ronson started the freight line thinking he'd get rich with one good haul by stealing all the gold. Yes, and he'd have gotten away with it if that masked man hadn't come along. We ought to lynch Jake Ransom. Now the law will deal with him, boy. You let this be a lesson to you men. You can't get something for nothing. Why, any right-thinking man would look for something underhanded when Ronson offered to freight gold at half price. Slater, I reckon we owe you an apology. Uh, that's all right, gents. I'm glad the truth came out. Oh, uh, you, Dan. Yes, sir. Masked man said he'd meet you in town to win camp. Yes, sir. <laughs> I reckon he started for camp already. Dan, is that masked man a friend of yours? He sure is. Well, I'm deeply indebted to him. Yeah. Aren't we all? We certainly are. Who is he? Well, you should know that, Slater. He's the Lone Ranger. Thank you.